How's everybody doing? Um, appreciate you coming. Obviously coming off a tremendous weekend, a great win for our players over a very good football team with Texas. Um, our kids showed uh, a great amount of uh, ability to finish, ability to stick together. Obviously we had, we started fast and we had a you know situation, you know, players that came back and they scored what 22 unanswered. And a lot of teams in that situation might not have handled it as well as our players did. Uh, I thought they stuck together. They believed they were going to win. Obviously, the uh, lightning delay added some fun to a very, very long football game. Uh, I think the focus our players had during that is something that should be commended uh, because it's very hard to stay focused that you know in that long. And there's no ending. If you say hey, we're going to play in an hour, um, you know that there was no way to know when we were going to play. Our kids stayed focused. They came back out and they got it done. Um, a tremendous job again by by everybody in our program We're sticking together, finding a way to win a football game against a very good football team in some very difficult situations. So as a staff, we're extremely proud of our players, uh, really happy for our players that they had a chance to, to play well and to get a victory and, and enjoy that a little bit. So very focused on Bowling Green right now. Uh, we got we got focus on, on them yesterday. A very good football team. They go very fast on offense, um, do a lot of different things. Some very good players coming back. Their quarterback is, is a younger guy that had a very good game. Um, and they've got a receiver that's very, very good. So they, they do a lot of things that, that make it challenging for you. They have a new defensive coordinator, a guy who's coached a long time and, and has a very good scheme. So it's a very good football team. To go play them on the road is going to be a tremendous challenge for us, and that's what we're focused on right now. With that, I'll take any questions you guys might have. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Coach, uh, is there any sense of normalcy now? I mean, I realize that this season's going to be un unlike any other, but with one bit behind you, a win... Uh, are, are you and maybe the players getting used to this unique situation? I think all we're doing, I mentioned, we're taking a day at a time. And I think we, we yesterday, our players day off during the week is, is on Monday. So they were in class doing that yesterday. We came in this morning and started our process. And again, we're focused on Bowling Green. We're going to have a great, you know, Tuesday's a great work day for us. And we're on our schedule doing our jobs. And, and that's where we're at. So every day is, is the, the, what we're focused on. And I think our kids are doing a great job of focusing on that. Coach, a couple days after your first game, as not just being the offensive coordinator, as being the head coach, uh, you've had a chance to evaluate not just the team but yourself and how you handle things. What did you like? What, just your snapshot of uh, how you handled things, calling the plays while directing the whole team. Yeah, I think you know, I'll go on the field, call it from the field. I mentioned, I mean, really, my focus was still being the coordinator and just kind of, like you mentioned, managing. And our staff did a great job. Everybody did their job, stuck in their role, stayed in their lane, and. Um, I didn't do much different that way. Being on the field was different. Um, I think we handled it fine. There was, you know, I, I mentioned after the game that the sneak, we had a personnel issue, and I wish I'd have called timeout. I should have called timeout. I got upstairs, down, anywhere else in the middle. That was all on me. I take full blame for that. And I'm really glad we still won the football game. So I'm always, I think, very critical of myself, and, and I wish I'd have done a better job with that. But as far as the way it went, I thought our kids played well, and I thought we, we all did our job. It's not about me, obviously, but I, I am frustrated at myself for that one. Follow up on the Falcons, what jumps off the tape, uh, even though it's just one game, what concerns you about? Well, they jumped out on Oregon 10 to nothing. Obviously, it was 10 0 at the end of the first quarter, so it shows you it's a very good football team playing against a, another national a national program that we all know about and hear about, who has tremendous athletes. So the fact they were able to get a 10 to nothing lead says a lot about their program, their ability to start fast. Again, I think their offense, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but they. They were near the top or at the top last year of plays per game. They take a lot of pride in how fast they go, and that creates a challenge for us on defense. We're going to have to do a good job on offense, staying up and scoring points, which is always our job, and then also at times possessing the football to make sure our defense has a chance to get themselves back together. So they're a, a good football team. They always have been. It's a program with a great history, and you know it's going to be a great challenge for us. Uh, coming off of a big win against a ranked team, a name brand, you're going on the road, you're a big favorite against Bowling Green, and then you just listed that all of their attributes. How do you impart that, especially on the uh, the younger players, to avoid the letdown game? Well, every week's a new week, and I think that's our certainly our mantra. You know, every week, you know, all you can do is be as good as you can today. 
and right now today is preparing for Bowling Green. So we started talking about that uh, yesterday when they were around and then continue to move forward with that today. And our older players played Bowling Green a couple years ago. Uh, I've played Bowling Green, so our younger players, I put, our older players doing a good job letting them know that it's a pretty, a pretty good football team we're playing. And uh, every game is the game, and every game is the biggest game of the year, and that's how we're approaching it. So great respect for that program. Again, I've played it multiple times, and, and again, our, our players have played them and the result didn't go quite the way they wanted to. So we don't have any problem getting ready for them. We have great respect for them, their staff, and we're excited to play. Josh? You're obviously an offensive guy, but the defense and the secondary particularly made some good, solid tackles on Saturday, especially Darnell Savage. What have you seen out of him to start off the season? I thought he had a tremendous game. I, I, to, your, to your first point, I think our defense played extremely well at the end of the game. To talk about getting three turnovers the last three drives, we went into the game and our message was to the team, the first, you know, every game it's pretty much the case, right? But the first, the first game it's turnover margin. Obviously, the first game of the year, certain things happen. Uh, our defense got three turnovers the last three drives of the game. Offensively, again, I'm always going to be more critical there, but you know, we, we could have done something different, but we didn't turn the football over. Um, so a great job by them. And the Savages, he's a very, very good player. He's got a great eye for the football. He plays with great passion, and you know, he's back there. You know, he's keeping the secondary in line, what to do, and he makes the calls. And, uh, he's a fun guy to be around, and we're fortunate to have him on our football team. Uh, you mentioned the calling the plays from the sideline, and now that you've done it before, is there anything you'll do differently this week or in terms of managing that? No, I don't think so. Like I said, I think it was good. The guys upstairs were did a good job giving the information I needed, and it was again that's just a comfort that's just a comfort level for me. I just never done it before, and a certain lot of guys do. A lot of guys like it down there better. I've always liked it upstairs, so it was just a comfort deal. And um, just being honest, that that was my biggest concern because it was my my job that was different. But I think we handled it fine. There's always going to be plays that I that are bad plays. If they don't work, they're all bad, right? So if anything doesn't work, I shouldn't have called. So that's just life of calling plays. But uh, I don't think anything was different with me being down or being up. So I think that went pretty smooth. Do you anticipate rotating between Hill and Big Room in the future? And if so, what kind of situations do you think you would rotate them? I definitely I definitely do anticipate it. I thought both of them played well. Uh, both of them did what we asked them to do. Uh, both of them could have played better. You know, both of them had a throw here or there that we could have done better. We could have protected better at times. We, we, I could have called better plays. We all could be better. So, the change from week one to week two in our game is always supposed to, you know, is always a pretty big jump. Um, but I think uh, both of them played well, and I think they both add things to our football team, to our offense, and and uh, we're going to play the best players, and uh, they're both going to play. Matt, um, in terms of what Joe Sean did. Uh, Obviously, you, you can't predict the guy's going to score three times the first three times he touches the ball. But did you see flashes of that uh, in, in during the you know during workouts during preseason? And also, does that change the way you use him based on his playmaking ability? Yeah, that was exactly how we scripted it. Was just like that. We knew he was going to score those three times. And that was exactly the way we planned it to go. Uh, now I, he's a special player, but we've got a lot of young guys that are talented. And I don't know. If, I think I answered it in the, in the press conference after the game, and we had. Multiple guys practiced the throw, and you know he kind of won that audition for that play, so that's why he got to throw it. But his ability with the ball in his hand is special. We've got some other guys, and I hope, we hope, as you watch our offense, you'll see, you know, over time it's been that way. Different guys have big games depending on who we're playing, and more so depending on the defensive structure of, that we play. And sometimes they want to stop this guy, so then this guy gets the ball. Sometimes they stop the run, we throw it more. So hopefully we're multiple enough on offense and have good enough players at the different positions that we can do that. But he certainly had a great day, and I expect him to have a very good season. I mean, it was a, it was a it was an exciting day, a special day for him. Coach, a lot of emotion uh, directed toward uh, remembering Jordan McNair, the flag, set his number afterward, the game ball. Uh, how important is it to sustain that, not only this week, but throughout the season? Uh, you, now you're on the road, uh, you know, the people around may not know about Jordan McNair, but certainly you guys do. Yeah, you know, I don't, don't mean this to be disrespectful. I'm not really worried about the people around. Now, our players, you know, how they continue to honor Jordan will be up to them. And I know they're going to continue to do those things, right? The flag was their idea. It's a big deal to them. Talking about Jordan's a big deal to them. Remembering Jordan's a big deal to them. So the way that we honor Jordan in our locker room and around is certainly led and done by our players. And I'm very proud to be a small part of the staff that's a part of this program that our kids are are doing it what I feel is the right way and again as I mentioned last week grieving in each other's way in each way that we all have and that's what we're doing and 
Sometimes that's celebrating, right? There was a celebration of Jordan after that game in our locker room. And sometimes it's a different form of grief. So I think our kids are doing a great job. I think they're handling it as well as they could be. And, and again, I, we're all, I will use the word I, we as a staff are really proud of our players and how they're handling it. Time for two more. Coach, <clears throat> Trey Watson played almost every down on defense. <clears throat> That was the run stopper in the middle, and then he got stretched all the way to the boundary side, mm -hmm. uh, covering Humphrey. Can you evaluate his performance, and when you see him on tape, how was his pass coverage? Well, I think it, uh, as, you know, the experience he's brought to us has been very, very big. Um, I think I think he, he is a guy that's playing sideline to sideline. He's a very physical player. Um, so we're, again, as I mentioned, I think last week we're fortunate he's part of our team, fortunate he's here, and I think he's added to our defense. I can't speak to the past. But I know where we are right now. He's a really big part of our defensive football team, and you know not only in the way he plays and his physical abilities you're mentioning, but I think his experience, which you know, leadership comes in many ways. He, you know, he may not be around and be the guy that everybody has known for four years, but his leadership of having some experience is big. Last one, Ty. Ty started to get a little, uh, you know. Distance and, and freedom in the second half. Uh, in the way he started, was that a byproduct of them paying so much attention to him because of what he did last year? And, and in, in that sense, did it help you guys maybe almost as a decoy with some of the plays you were running on the bubble screen? I mean, on the jet sweeps. Um, I think every game, you, if you as you continue to watch us with our offense, teams have to kind of decide what they want to stop. And um, hopefully, right, and then it's a matter of getting the right plays, which is, you know, we can blame me for those when they're not good. But sometimes they're going to pack it in there and stop the run. Sometimes they're going to try to be on the edges and worry about the sweep. Sometimes they're going to back up and stop the pass. Again, our hope and our, our plan is we've got good players on the edge at wide out. We've got a good quarterback. We've got a good line. We've got good backs. Our tight ends both had a chance to almost get touchdowns, right? We just came up a tick short on both those. So we're going to move the ball around to what's available. So early in the game, I would say it's fair to say they committed to stopping the run inside. And then as it went on, we never quite got it going the way I think we hoped we would, um, which is a credit to Texas. They were stout inside. I mean, 44 for them played about as hard as, as you could imagine. You know, if you really watch the game, he was a really good football player. I mean, they had a lot of good players, but he played so hard. Um, but I think our guys up front did a good job. Obviously, again, coming off of a game win or lose, we can get this, this, and this better, and we're going to try to do that. So. But a defense can, if defense wants to stop the run, they can. They can put enough people in there that they can stop the run. If they want to play cover two and drop eight, they can stop the pass. And um, sometimes you're limited as an offense with your personnel that you only have players good enough to do certain things. And right now, we don't think that's our case. We think we've got players in each spot to kind of let them decide what they want to stop. And we have to manage the game. Our quarterbacks have to do a good job getting us in the right play. And so all those things kind of come together.